kingdom of heaven. First of all, I would say the kingdom of heaven is simply that state into which man rises, where everything is completely subject to his imaginative power. He is destined to be an heir, one who is power who is not, where everything is put under his power. There is a quote from this 13th of Matthew. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and brought it. It is my hope. I can bring you to that pearl tonight. You may not value it to the point where you're willing to sell all that you have to buy it. But I will tell you of this pearl. Very few are willing to sell all and buy the pearl. But let me now quote from another passage of the Gospels. The 11th chapter of the book of Luke. 21st to the 23rd. What a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace. His goods are in peace. But when one stronger than he assails it and overcomes it, he takes from him the armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. The very next line, as though it's an afterthought, throws all the light in the world upon that thing. He who is not with me is against me. There is no benevolent neutrality, none whatsoever. He who is not with me is my enemy. He is against me. We find the one who is completely in control of this kingdom of heaven. I tell you, that being is called in scripture Christ. But Christ is defined as the power and the wisdom of God. In the first chapter of the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Don't look for a man. A man is only the instrument through which this power and this wisdom is exercised. But Christ himself is the power and the wisdom of God. You and I are the instrument through which this power and this wisdom is exercised. Paul makes the statement, from now on, we will regard no one from the human point of view. Even though we once regarded Christ from the human point of view, we regard him so no longer. You're taking notes that his second letter to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse. From now on, we regard no one from the human point of view. Even though we once regarded Christ from the human point of view, we regard him thus no longer. And then he, the author of that statement, defines Christ for us. Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Now we are told, by him all things were made. And without him, not anything made that was made, but nothing. And so we invite you now to test Christ in you. Again from the letters of Paul, the 13th chapter, the 5th verse, in fact, read it through to the 7th verse, I'll quote you the 5th. Examine yourself to see whether you are holding to the faith. Test yourselves. 
do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in me? Unless, of course, you fail to meet the test. I hope you will discover that we have not failed. And then he gives us a warning. But now he's speaking only of power. Power and wisdom personified in the form of one called Christ, Jesus. And now he warns us, I hope and I pray to God that you do not use it in the wrong way. Even if you think implying now that I have not used it to the full of my knowledge. I rather you hear and feel that I have made a mistake or I have failed to let you use it evil. Implying, stating quite openly, you can misuse power. Everyone in the world is using this only power, but they don't know it. So he's trying to bring us to the knowledge of this power and the wise use of it. It's called, the first quoted it, it's called the pearl of great price. So great is this pearl, so valuable, it takes everything that you own to buy it. Now you don't go and liquidate your stocks and bonds. You don't sell your home. You don't sell anything in the world of but it takes everything that you now believe in, other than if you pay for it. You believe in astrology? You've got to sell it. You believe in numerology? She can't believe in numerology and all these things. No matter what you believe in is a power to control you, you've got to sell it. It takes the belief, all these beliefs, and you've got to sell them. I want them to buy them from you, but you give them up as valueless. Therefore, there's no price attached, no value whatsoever. But you can't hold on to one thing you now believe in is a power that controls your life and still hope to buy the pearl of great price. Everything you now believe in want to be even the drugs that you take, even the things, the diets, if you're a vegetarian, you think that's the way to God. If you're a meat eater, you think that's the way to God. If you are a non-smoker, non-drinker, that's the way to God. Or if you are a smoker and a drinker, and that's the way to God. There is no way to God but Christ. I am the way. There is no other way way to walk, to everything in this world, but especially to the Father. No one comes unto the Father, but by me. And he defines it, he is the only way in the world to everything in this world that you and I see. And it takes everything that we own as to be least that we think by powers to guide our life, to pay for that pearl of great price. If you think for one moment you can hold on to one little thing, if the event this doesn't work, you can't buy the pearl. And so when I buy the pearl, I go all out and get by it. And there is no other being in the world just this pearl. I live by it. And this pearl is your own wonderful human imagination. That's right. So I see her in the audience tonight. Last Friday night, this sweet baby told me this stuff. She went into the baker to buy the usual things to buy we go to bakery. And the lady who made it on her didn't look well. And she, without asking the reason for her present appearance, in her own, own mind's eye when she got home, she talked to her as though she stood before physically. She didn't sit down. And relax and go into a trance as part of before her mind's eye and heard her say that she felt so well. And she complimented her the way she looked. She looked so well. And this was a communion between two souls. Oh, he looked so well. 
I should believe in the reality of our unnatural act. One week later, she goes back into the same place. And here is this lady, same lady, but radiant. So radiant, it prompted a response from this one. And she said, but you look so well. What has happened? Well, she said, this is actually my inheritance of money. I paid all of my bills. I paid everything that I owe to this world. And so I have no debts, and I have money. Now, this lady is totally unaware of the gifts she received from the lady who had come here tonight. Totally unaware of it. Now, listen to these words. I try to put any other interpretation upon it in the world, and then tell me if you can. This is from the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew. Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. You don't need the consent of any being in this world to hear good news for me. You don't have to say, do you want me to hear it? Do you want praise? If you ask them in advance, should I hear good news for you? You're only asking to give your faith that it works. They'll praise you or in some way give you something. You don't ask anyone for their permission to be heard with you. For in as much as you have heard it, as you have done it, you want of the least of these, my brethren, you give it up. And when you did not do it, not do it unto every moment of time there's the opportunity to do it unto Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus be your own mother for the imagination. And to see man in me and not man in your own wonderful imagination that she did is to keep the wounds open and to bear more and more stripes upon the body of Christ Jesus. For the only Christ Jesus and you're going to be wonderful to work in that direction. Christ in you is the form of God. Come, test yourself and see. What a wonderful information. Test yourself. I'm going to test myself. And this is how you test yourself. I tell you that if you imagine, as this lady did, that someone stands before you, in that you form, though cannot be seen with your mortal eye, but actually you imagine they are standing before you. And you carry on the conversation with them from the premise of your fulfilled desire for them. And then you feel the that you would feel it for them outside of the present. And you believe in the reality of that imaginal act. Right. And how it happens, you need not be concerned. It has its own matter of externalizing itself within their world. All you need to do is do it. As told us in the first chapter of the book of James. What he said, receive with meekness the implanted word. The word is called by Jesus, the power and the wisdom of God. But be ye doers of the word, and not merely hearers. Deceiving yourself. When he tells me to be the doer of the word, the world thinks it needs to go out and make some physical effort. No. James is not telling me to substitute works for faith. Works are the evidence as to whether the faith that I profess is alive or dead. Is it alive? If it's alive, I will act upon it. If it's not alive, or okay, dead, I will act upon it. I haven't yet bought the pearl of great price. When I buy the pearl of great price, there is no other pearl like me. I sell all in this world. Buy it. I sell all beliefs in powers other than my own wonderful human imagination. And everyone, because he has imagination, and everyone can imagine, everyone can believe in the reality.
the other commander that is three sets of answers. You will tell, you believe my word, and abide in my word, then you know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So how do you define the truth? That I am the truth. If you know my word, you know the truth. And I am the truth. You have died in this, then you will be set free. Meaning that if I simply imagine that I am the man that I was not to be, then all that I need you is just as fine. Imagine that you are already the man that you would like to be. The woman you would like to be. Your things are what the father's things are, as you would like them to be. Just imagine the fire. Test yourself in this. As you test yourself, and it happens, well then, then you turn back to the belief in any power outside of Christ Jesus. In spite of your fears, and I tell you, Christ Jesus is your own wonderful evil of imagination. Christ in you was resurrected. So you start to exercise it. Believing in it, believe in the Lord Christ Jesus, as we say. And so I begin to believe in him. But now my trust in him. It doesn't matter where I start in life. I have the eight ball, makes no difference. I start believing in him and only in Christ Jesus. And I take off from there. Giving my entire life to him just as though it were not. Just Christ Jesus. And I have found him in my own wonderful view of imagination. And I believe in him to that extent. Things happen. Now she tells me the same lady, that's why I named this night the Pearl of Great Night. She had a dream. The hair was out of mud, nothing but mud, whirling mud. And as it whirled and whirled and whirled before her mind's eye in her dream, she noticed a small, perfectly beautiful, perfect pearl. And she picked it up. You know, this perfect girl was big, but it was a perfect girl in her hair. Now, this girl he found in the series of experiences that she conducted. For a boy came east, came from the east to the west, with instructions that if he couldn't find a job in the immediate present, he had to return to the east. And so she simply, on a Friday night, Sorry, not physically, but in our minds are as though he stood before her physically and congratulated him on the job. Just as though it were a true physical contact on Monday the body got the job. And therefore did not have to return. Now here is a young baby from in Italy from a Catholic family, Catholic family brought to this meeting of ours by her mother-in-law and adopted this concept of Christ Jesus. Our family despairs because they think that you have their concept of Christ Jesus. There is no entrance even to the kingdom of heaven as they understand it. So I tell her she fell into it. She is exercising the only Christ Jesus in the world. Calls upon us to test it every moment of time, but you can't buy it unless you pay the price. The price it takes everything that you have to buy. Listen to the words: the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, finding one pearl of great value, went and sold everything that he had and bought. Everything, not a few things, but a thousand things in the world people have concerning what they should do. Every belief in a power outside of Christ Jesus you give up. And you give it up and hold on to him and only to him. Then you bought the pearl. And then you exercise it. The greatest value in the world, and that's Christ Jesus. So 
Yes, she has. I, I think she has a pearl of great price. I hope you tonight will accept it. You know, not everyone who finds Christ Jesus, sorry, you know, they're brought to him by one who found him. In the gospel, Paul found him. And then he brought his friend Nathaniel. Nathaniel wasn't seeking. Nathaniel was waiting for peace to come, for he knew the scripture backwards. When Nathaniel heard that the Messiah had a prayer, to what? Any good thing come out of Nazareth? Jesus said of him, but he is alive in me, because there is no God. He knew his scripture. Peter wasn't seeking him. His brother Andrew found him. And he went and called his brother Peter, that we have found him of whom most of the lost spoke, and all the prophets spoke. So they were not looking for him, but they found him because someone found him and was so interested in what they found, they wanted to share it with them, that they're not. For if he is all that we claim that he is, we can't keep it to ourselves, we have to share it. And so maybe this night, a total stranger may be here. Who is really not overly eager to change their concept of Christ Jesus? They are seeking another concept of him at all. And maybe you will be interested enough to test what I'm talking about and see if this is not Christ Jesus. Or listen to it, by him all things are made. Without him, there was not anything made that was made. Or now here a lady brought into being something that she had imagined without devising a means by which it would happen. She simply imagined it. Didn't she make it? She said, who made it? Without the consent of the one for whom she made it. Well, if she made it, and all things are made by him, she didn't say to herself, well, how can I make it? I only imagine that what he must be imagination. And this being in action must be imagined. There it is. She found it. She tried it again, and it worked. And the one tries it a third time, a twelfth time, a hundred times, and it works. If I say this to someone in the world, and they will even try it, but you know, in science, to demand proof before you're willing to make the experiment is not. It's only through the experiment that is working out in performance that proof can be received by us. So to demand proof before I make these problems stupid. So, I say to the world, if there is evidence for a thing, then what the world thinks about it, or even wishes for it, nothing to the point. It's a different part to other. What the world thinks about this, if I can prove it in the problem, I say to you, take a friend who is now unemployed, I'm bringing before your mind's eye as the lady did. And see him now gainfully employed. He need not be physically present. In fact, he is not physically present. But you treat him as though he were. And put your mental hands upon him. And give him the stability that it would be. Would be there. Were it true. And then carry on a mental conversation with him from the premise that it is true. And hear him tell you that he is gainfully employed. And that he loves what he is doing. There's an opportunity to grow through what he's doing and do nothing outside of that. Well, there's two words of Paul concerning Christ. Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. It's not only power, driving power, it's wisdom, the wisdom of God. It is the wisdom of God in knows how to navigate the whole vast world and move it to bring this world into a game. In state. All you need to do is believe in Christ Jesus, and that is the pearl of great price. No power in the world can stop. All it needs is acceptance of the part of us. Here, when there is a strong man, and he's fully armed, and he, God, the own goddess, Goods are in me. When one 
stronger than he assails it and overcomes it, he takes from him the armor in which he believes, and then the stone of the spoil, the body of the spoil. Now that wonderful statement, he who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. It's so irrelevant to that theme that preceded it, and it throws all the light in the world upon that thing. Some power in the world comes in man's mind. It's quite deep. And you don't need a social stand, financial background, intellectual background. Any of these backgrounds feel secure in the world. You found it. And this is the one who can overcome all the powers of the world. And if you are not with him, then you are against him. You wouldn't think that. In this world today, we have countries that are called neutralist countries. Benevolent neutralists. Not in scripture. You are either with me or you against me. You are either with me or you are my enemy. Imagine that. I'm either for him or I am his enemy. Can't be neutral. I either believe in it, or I don't believe in it. Out of the 900 million Christians in the world, how many really believe in the true God? They believe in lighting a candle. They believe in genuflection. All of the other things in the world, I wouldn't criticize any of them, leave them, until they find the true God. When they find the true God, then it doesn't really matter whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, whether you drink or don't drink, whether you smoke or don't smoke, whether you do any of these things, it makes nothing whatsoever to do with the truth. Or you do not give power to anything outside of life. And Christ is your own wonderful human imagination. That's why. When you go before anyone, don't even make fun of the what you will say. Just imagine him. Having pronounced his judgment based upon the aim you have to speak each other. To them. Live this way in the world. Trusting 100% in the pearl of great price. May I tell you, it will not fail. But you can't modify it. You can't hold back one little reserved thing. I am speaking from experience. Not knowing that it was my own imagination that predicted accurately through the medium of the cards and the medium of the stars, I held back a little reserved note in my mind's eye when I found mine. I was still having my mind's eye my own horoscope. I could picture, arrange its progression. I would know the day and justify faith. So the rule of my second house, in conflict with the rule of my six, can't get the job. No money to it. It's all over there. All in my mind's eye. I have to completely give it up and so tear up my horoscope in my mind's eye, it doesn't exist. I have to completely destroy it as a power that guided me. So I held it because I successfully Total events for unnumbered people in New York City. I am almost the entire metropolitan crowd. The entire metropolitan outcome that came to me. And I so believed in what I did, I predicted with conviction. It worked, and there was a soul of it. And then I had to have an experience one day. Show me it was only my own intense belief in these little symbols that made them work. I came into my friend's home that I taught her how to read charts, how to set them up. Her name was Carpenter, Norma Carpenter, and I taught her. And then, having retired from a teaching profession in Scranton, Pennsylvania, she had a small pension from the rail. Railroad where her husband worked, 
plus a small pension from her former job. So she eked out a living because she could augment it in a nice way by telling and reading charts. And I taught her how to do it. When I came to her place one day, she didn't look at her. No, it was in tears. I said, what? Oh, no. But she said, a man called me up. He was recommended by a friend of mine. And he was very eager to see me right away. He had this fantastic deal. So over the phone before he arrived, he gave me his birthday, his hour, everything about it. And so I erected the charm. And when he came, I told him I'm so convinced of this good fortune falling his way today that I can close the book on it. He said to me, Mrs. Carpenter, if you're telling me the truth, I will give you a hundred dollars. And he said so confidently, he'll give it to me now. Because it has to work today. And she gave me all the reasons that I knew I told them so. How did it have to work today? Because of this crazy move over these certain aspects of the job. He said, no, if it works, you would get it today. But I will not give it to you now. I said, what's wrong with that? What she said, I wrote, I made up this chart from a phone volume of Metal Meredith. I was sitting at the open window top, and so I turned away, I was diverted, and when I went back I didn't realize the wind had blown over the pages, and I erected a chart of a man who was born ten years before this man, because there wasn't even born. I progressed my chart from this horoscope, made up ten years before the birth of this man. I said, Norma, did you believe it when you spoke to him? Certainly I did. I said, forget it. Just completely forget it. It's done. I was in her room, her sweet room, that night, around eight, when a Western Union boy came upstairs and delivered a check, a Western Union check for one hundred dollars. And the chart was robbed of a man who wasn't born. He was born 10 years after this job of a man. But Norma cannot sell that because she feels they all believed in me. She cannot buy the pearl of great price. Because she feels her only security is to get her little small check on the railroad in Pennsylvania and her small check on the schoolhouse in Scranton, Scranton Pennsylvania. And eat it out with this so she cannot give up and buy the pearl. You've got to give up every belief in this world in a power outside of Christ to my mind. There is nothing but Jesus Christ. You either believe in him or you don't believe in him. And any little reservation for a rainy day, it'll rain. So you fall back to belief in stars. Well, I'm confessing. Having done it so successfully over the years, I still try in my mental furniture, my chart. And so you see, you can always justify failure. And as Greg said, self justification is the voice of hell. I didn't know it. In hell, everyone is justifying himself. But what he does, it's a failure. Justified. Because you have the reasons of the world. But hell is not a place outside of earth, it's right here. So we are in the hell justifying failure. We couldn't do it because of the mighty us. And then as soon as we are just beyond the point where it interferes with you, but I'll tell them early. And so there I go. And when in spite of being and working, something happens, oh, why did I see this? But it was all alone. Man goes back and reflects and then again justifies. No. He went and sold all that he had and bought it. All that he had, not a few things. You can't just buy it with a few of the things that you will dispose of. Yet you can use it. Use it wisely and successfully. But you don't really possess it that well. Unless you buy him, and you can only buy him 
when you sow everything that you have in the Bible. And so that is all out, or nothing. So he who is not with me is against me. I know it's the difficult thing. But is it worthwhile having? When you consider by having Christ Jesus, you are rising into a world of an entirely new order. But everything is subject to your imaginative power. You're not here at all. You're moving from the world of death into the world of life. When you find with you. When you take it, then let me tonight, in a quick summary, it will take you no more than one minute to do it. You take this pattern, it's going to happen to you. Crucifixion is over. For our lives, you aren't going to be crucified. I have been crucified with Christ. It is not I who live, Christ who lives in me. I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me to be himself. That's to be. Right? You believe me. And as you didn't know this was the pearl of red light, and I brought it to you this night, I hope you'll buy it. But like all the great things of Scripture, now try wine, try and look without buying, without buying. The only price you pay for it is not dollars and cents. Give up your belief in power outside of Christ Jesus, and Christ Jesus is your own wonderful.